We're going to begin this hour with an outspoken figure in the Democratic Party. I'm talking about California Representative Katie Porter, who became the first single mom of young kids in Congress after she was elected back in 2018. And now she's joined the race to replace Senator Dianne Feinstein, who is retiring. Porter has also written a memoir. I love this title. I swear, colon, politics is messier than my minivan. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Morales took a drive with Porter, and they spoke about her unique, unique being a nice word for it, style of questioning the powerful in Congress. The drug didn't get any better. The cancer patients didn't get any better. You just got better at making money. When Congresswoman Katie Porter takes the mic, she has a plan of attack that you're feeding us lies, that we must pay astronomical prices to get innovative treatments is false. Her ability to challenge some of the titans of industry has made her viral and a go-to guest on late night talk shows. Are you exhausted from appearing in every Republican's nightmares? Um, no, I think that's a, a very comfortable role for me. Okay. If you're full of bull I'm coming for you. Excellent. Thank Porter you. first ran for office in 2018, flipping an Orange County district long considered a Republican stronghold. She became the first single mom of young kids working in Congress. Luke was 12, Paul 10, and Betsy 7 when their mother was sworn in. What advice did you get early on from your fellow members in Congress about how to do your job? When I asked about the schedule, I said, well, can we figure out what we're doing? Because I need to tell my child care provider. They said, well, we just can't run Congress around people like you. Hmm. And I said, what, what do you mean, like, people like me? Well, well, you have such a special situation. And I said, special? There's like 10 million, 12 million single parents out there. The only place where that's special is in Congress, not in America. We've got some sand from the beach. This is the minivan from the title of her new memoir. We've got a, a weird book from an ex-boyfriend. We have a project that I never had time to help my daughter with. With personalized plates that read oversight, Porter says she's a rule follower while cruising her neighborhood near UC Irvine's law school, where she used to teach. When you're in this minivan, do you ever rock out a little carpool karaoke? Well, for a long time, <laughs> um, I didn't have a working radio. Oh, OK. And um, maybe the chicks. Ready, 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 ready. In the book, Porter shares lighthearted parenting tales, but she also reveals a darker time as a victim of domestic abuse. She writes, my ex-husband got angrier and more violent as the realization that they were divorcing became clearer. Porter slept with a chair propped against the doorknob. It was hard to have to go back to something that I just mm -hmm. desperately wanted to have be in the past. You also understood the importance of your voice to be that voice in Washington to talk about domestic abuse. You know, you, when that kind of thing is happening to you, like I said, it's very personal, yeah. and you often experience it alone. Who do you tell? Who can you trust? And when I spoke out about it in the campaign, I was shocked and saddened how many people came up to me and said, you know, that happened to me. Her kids have grown up campaigning, nicknaming her Congress mom. When Porter won her seat last November, her son Paul introduced her to supporters, recalling his reaction when mom first told them she was entering politics. My brother and uh, Luke and I looked at each other and said, this hobby isn't going to last a lot. <laughs> Are you worried about them reading the book? And yeah. yeah. I let the kids read the book before it was published because I I knew it would be painful for them. One of the things they said was, I'd like some time to consider my legal rights. <laughs> um, and another one said- Sounds like your kids. Another one said, this is why I don't read memoirs. So they definitely are probably not gonna be leaving any, you know, any amazing reviews on the book. You can get out flour and sugar. Porter travels to Washington at least three times a month. So most meals are prepped ahead of time. And there's a whiteboard in the house. Congress mom is now in a race being called a dramatic showdown to fill the Senate seat Dianne Feinstein has held since 1992. It's been reported Senator Feinstein, who is 89, is suffering from cognitive decline. She has denied that. Do you think, though, there should be an evaluation of mental fitness for candidates running for public office? So I think the solution to this is to make sure that every candidate, every campaign, the voters really have a chance to meet them to test them, to challenge them, um, and to make their own decisions about whether or not to support them. You said at the time you think it's time for change. So it were you saying that it was time for change, that Dianne Feinstein was 
not up to the task of the job? Well, what I'm saying is it's time for change, but we also need people who are new, who see the problems facing the next generation or younger generations, and that's why I decided to run. Porter's toughest challenger might be California Congressman Adam Schiff, who played a key role in former President Trump's first impeachment. You've called yourself a warrior. Are you more of a warrior than Congressman Schiff is? Congressman Schiff is a career politician. I think I'm closer to what, what it's like to be a regular American citizen, watching TV or reading the paper and wondering, why the heck does Congress not work? Inflation is always complex. Anyone who says, and this is the Republicans all day long, Inflation's bad. No sh Sherlock. Of course inflation's bad. I, too, go to the grocery yeah. store. You are running for the Senate now, but are there perhaps bigger aspirations someday, the White House? I think one of the things you have to do as a single mom is just solve the next problem that, that's in your face. But I've always been the kind of person who looked for ways to, to make a difference. So it sounds like you're very open to the idea or the suggestion. Well, I'm not saying no, but I would think it's, <laughs> I think it's silly to say no. I think government service is important. I mean, keep in mind, I'm 49 and I'm considered young by congressional standards. I'm not young. I've had Botox twice. Like, I'm not young. <laughs> um, but by Congress terms, I am. And so I think it is important for new voices, voices that often haven't been heard in our government, whether those are people of color, indigenous people, um, LGBTQ people, to look for those doors of opportunity and not be afraid to walk through them. Now, we also reached out to some of Porter's main competition in the California Senate race so that we can sit down with them as well. Katie Porter has been called the whiteboard wizard. She loves a whiteboard. And as you saw, her kids are actually fans of having that whiteboard in their house. They say uh, they can express themselves. And also, it's a place where Congress mom often leaves them a list of chores. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, well, Natalie, that seems like a great afternoon to me that what you spent. I, I can see men and women all around looking at this, certainly in California, saying, you go, Katie Porter. Yeah. There was so much about her that was so relatable to so many different yeah. things in our lives and her lives. I'm so glad you brought she that to She tells it us. like it is. Yeah, she, she does. She really does. She's, she's she pretty really real. Does. It's a great piece. And I have a feeling her kids do those chores that she writes on the whiteboard. Yeah. For they sure. do. While not spreading <laughs> sand in that minivan. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Natalie, thanks a lot. That was a great piece. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Co it.